Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Cart Art. We're painting the spring showers tonight. So let me get some water out here and we will get started shortly. Thank you guys for joining in tonight and watching me. And this is the painting we're painting. And remember, you can do it in any color, any flowers. We can, we can change it up if you wish, or you could paint it just like this one here. So let me know when you pop on and um, if the audio and the video is okay. Sounds okay on my end, but... Um, and I'll move this banner in a minute once we get paint, get painting, but I just want you to say hello. Um, I know sometimes you might have to give StreamYard permission there uh, to for the comments for me to see your name. But anyways, let me let me get started by getting my colors out. I usually have them ready, but I'm a little behind tonight, so we'll do it together. Hey, Sandy. Oh, good. It was a little echoey on my end, but everything was set right, so thank you for that. And we will get our colors out now. And this is what you will use if you want to do it just like mine. If you're painting any other colors or anything, let me know in the comments and I can guide you with what you need. Um, I try to usually walk you guys through using mostly primary colors and teaching you a little bit about mixing. But if you have pinks or colors mixed that you like, certainly use whatever you wish. We're using acrylics tonight, water base. And you can use any kind you like, whatever you might have. If you have the uh, tubed acrylic, that's fine. You have the craft acrylics like this, that's fine. I buy my paint in bulk sometimes, so that's why I'm using these, looks like condiment containers. <laughs> Hi, Karen. Hey, Stephanie. Stefana, sorry. Oh, and thank you for painting with me. You'll have fun. And any questions at all as we go along, pop in and just put them in the comments. Hi, Zena. I'm glad you made it tonight. So I'm putting out some black and white. And... Just a, just a primary yellow, just a cad yellow, primary yellow, just a nice yellow. Don't put out as much paint as I do. I never know when to stop. I could paint three paintings every time I put my paint out. So a little of that. I'm gonna use a nice dark green. I like to mix my green so I have different shades. This is a phthalo green. Again, put out whatever you have, whatever you have for yellows or greens. We'll use what you have. And if we need to mix them and you need a direction, I'm here. That's what I'm here for. We're going to do blue for our background on mine, just a textured blue and white. So I'll put a little bit of phthalo blue, which is a nice primary blue. And then we will, um, I do like a gold. I, I use this, I mix a lot of my colors, but I use this gold a lot. It's like a yellow ochre. Um, this one's called yellow ochre. This is yeah, the gold ochre. It's just that goldy color, which I really like behind um, the tulips. I use a little of this, and then I use some burnt sienna, which is that reddish brown. So I'm going to put a little of that out now, too. And this is that burnt sienna. It's just a red brown. It's nice, and you can see I use it behind the brighter colors. When I paint, I tend to paint in layers, building up to the highlights. I start dark a lot of times. You'll see on these leaves here, I'm gonna start almost with a black green. Can you see in the background? And then I layer lighter shades of green on top that really makes them pop. And then when you put a little white highlight here and there or a light highlight, it really comes, it, it comes forward nicely. Hi, Janine. Yes, Janine, you can watch tonight or paint along, but this will be here on my Tinker's Cart Art page. It will also be uploaded to YouTube. And if you signed up for the supply list, um, it will get emailed out to you tomorrow sometime. So you'll have plenty of um, time to watch it over and over, stop and start it, whatever you would like. Okay, we've got all those colors that we need. And then the, the boots are going to be a pink, which we can mix up with red and white. I also have a nice fuchsia. Uh, but you can use whatever you have. I'm going to wait on that for now since I've not got much room on my palette there. So let's start with these colors. Again, they're all acrylics. And any questions about the colors or the brushes or anything as we go along, just let me know. Let me remove this banner so you guys can see the whole screen. There we go. And I'm going to put your comments up. So as you come along, I will be able to answer your questions. Hi, Cheryl. I'm glad you guys, a lot of new first timers, let me know where you're watching from. That's really fun. A lot of times I had someone last time um, in Puerto Rico and Hawaii and then just down the street. So it's kind of fun to see um, where you are all watching from. Okay, so I've traced my design on, as you can see. 
And whenever I send you guys out the supply list, I always keep put an image in there of the painting. So sometimes that might be nice to bring up on your phone or a print out as a photo. I, I would like to be able to have both the both pieces out. I'm not sure if, it, if we can see it all, but I will try that because I know people like to see the painting as we go. Let me see if the screen's wide enough. Maybe we can do that a little bit tonight so you can at least get an idea what it's going to look like. Okay. So what I use, I, I'm very simple with supplies. I use a few brushes, not many. I'll show them to you as I go. Cup of water, a little paper cup, plastic cup, whatever. I use the little uh, styrofoam plates for my palette. Those disposable palettes on the pads are quite nice too. I've used those quite a bit. So if you wanna grab a pad of those, that works too. And brushes, so I'm gonna grab my brushes. So for our background, we're gonna just paint around the boots and the tulips. I'm not gonna be super careful going in and out of every leaf because I kind of know where I want them to go. If you want to, you could be a little more careful than I will. Um, sometimes you see the line work right through and a lot of times you can just freehand these. I've traced them in, but you could certainly have just traced your tulips and then we can freehand all these leaves in too. Turn your mic up, let me see. Cheryl, let me try that, hang on. Let me know if that's better. I put it all the way up here now. So see if that's better. If not, I can fool around some other settings too. And I tend to talk a little softly, so I'll try to project if that helps. Okay, background is just gonna be with a big brush. I use these white bristle, um, they're like for oil painting or acrylic painting. They are a long handled brush, which is called a bright. They are a filbert, which is a rounded top. I like the bounce and the texture I get when I'm doing landscapes and seascapes and things with this because it's got some uh, it, some weight to it. It's 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 um, not too soft and flimsy. But if you just have a like a oh two inch uh, chip brush, those chip brushes, or which are these, which are super inexpensive, and I use them for lots of things. You can use that. You can use a one inch, or two inch, or one and a half, just an acrylic uh, synthetic brush. It's, it's just background stuff. It's not real important to exactly what you, what, you what you use. So whatever bigger brush you have, if you look closely at my painting there, can you see the background is just blue and white and I sort of do kind of hash XC strokes. I dry brush a little white on the top. I just want something textured but nothing too busy that it takes away from all, all the busyness we have on our painting. This is a similar technique as I do when I do skies, if any of you have painted skies with me. I take a little bit of blue on my brush. I don't mix it up to see what color I have. I just take a little blue and a little white because when I go onto my canvas, I want it to be different shades. I don't want it to be a perfectly light and dark mix, which you might need sometimes for certain things. But can you see I'm doing sort of X-y crisscrossy strokes? And as I go, I take just sometimes white, Sometimes I take just blue. I want it to be light and dark. I work pretty quickly. The reason being is that paint is gonna blend right on my brush if I work fast enough. If I was to go very slow and start here and then maybe hop over and try to meet here, then your paint might have dried and you're gonna have a funny line. So I'm gonna start in one corner, work out. Lots of times you'll see me, I will Paint the sides and the edges first. If you want to see a little bit of like what's the color look like, you can do that. I like these gallery wrapped canvases. You can paint the edge and it's not necessary to frame them. You can, of course, if you wish, but they are finished off nicely with the galaxy, uh, the galaxy, <laughs> the gallery wrapped. Hi, Catherine. Welcome, Lakeland. Oh, okay. I thought I had someone from Lakeland, but it's your first time. My, um, or maybe we chatted. We chatted online. I think my. Um, Sister-in-law's mom lives in Lakeland and most of my family's in Orlando. And so I'm down there like once a month. Okay, so let's just get our background painted. And like I said, I'm gonna work from the corner out as best I can. And I'm not worrying too much about exactly these lines, but if you're more comfortable, you can take your littler brush and go right in and out. But I certainly will walk you through afterwards freehanding those. So whatever you're comfortable with. And as I work along, if I leave, if I'm going a little too fast or a little too slow, let me know. 
I try to work at a good pace so that we can finish. And, um, but I don't want to, you know, go too, too fast for you. Now this sort of textured brushstroke, I like to do these little X's. You could certainly do something swirly, use your own, um, you know, use what you like, make it the painting your own, but just don't go back and forth because then it will look like you painted a wall and um, that's not the look we're going for. If I'm doing water sometimes, I will go back and forth. Um, and because I want that, that look of the water back and forth. But this, I want texture. So I'm gonna stay away from the tulips the best I can. But again, I kind of jump right in and, and sort of make it a fun, textured, kind of impressionistic background. And you can see now, this looks a little bit too blended to me. Look how it looks just kind of blah, where you've got all this action going on here. So if I see that, I'll just take a little of the light or the dark. And I'm doing kind of a light stroke. Otherwise, it will all blend in. So I'm putting that right on there and leaving some showing. And then afterwards, I did actually go back. And you can see it's a little bit of white dry brushed. I use a dry brush technique a lot in my painting. So we will use that as a little learning lesson. And I'll pop in at the end here. And I'll show you how we can dry brush some white on top there. Yeah, Catherine, of course you could, because um, it's going to almost dry by the time we get down to the bottom, too, because um, I like to have it a little dry so I'm not putting my hand in it. But you could certainly do it in steps. You could do the background and leave it and come back to it and do the, uh, the rest later. And what's good is about recording these is you will get the recording. So do not worry about catching up or being behind, because you can tomorrow, tomorrow when you get the recording, you can download it, and then you don't even have to watch it straight through. You can start and start it and, and watch it at your own pace. And like I said, if you don't have the supply list, it's in the link of the description, but it's also on the page. And what that does is that um, gives me your email so you will get your supply list and tracer, but then I have your email so I can send you the recording afterwards. Is anyone else going to do a different, anyone going to do a different color or are we all doing the pink tonight? I was almost going to mix mine up a little bit, but I really like the pink on this blue background. This sort of background that I'm doing, I'm doing it in blue. You could do that same technique with any color you wanted. So if you wanted to do like a goldy yellow background and then make red tulips or something that would pop, that would be pretty cool. What I'd love to see is when everyone shows off their painting later on the page, it's fun to see how everybody does a little take, a little different twist on the painting. And then they make it their own. That's kind of cool. This is an appropriate painting here for us. I'm actually, I live in Massachusetts, but I'm in Maine right now. And we have had such crazy weather. This weekend was just, I bet you it was in the 40s at night and raining all weekend. Memorial Day weekend. I feel bad for all the people that, you know, the cookouts planned and, and whatnot, but I don't know what the weather's like where you guys are, but today it's in the 70s. So typical New England weather. If you don't like it, wait a minute. And I'm just, you can see my palette there. I just go into each color and Now's the time you just look at it with your own eye and say, I wish it was lighter or darker. It's just your own taste. See how much lighter it is. You can do lighter and get darker as you get to the top or vice versa. Kind of nice the way that looks kind of light and it's going into the dark area. Very much like I, like I said, I would paint a sky. I would do same exact techniques, but then I would throw in some clouds and, and, and some maybe some purple shades on the clouds sometimes, a little gold sometimes. But this is how I would start. little blue into my white, get a shade I like, kind of look on the edges of the canvas as I do those and see. Um, thank you, Cheryl. And these tulips are super simple. We don't want to stress about things because then it looks overworked. I do a lot of times painting with palette knife, even my flowers. Very rough. I'll show you step-by-step um, step how to do them. And a little trick is to not make them all alike. Make some with a little, you know, a petal here or a petal in the middle. Vary them up different sizes. They don't have to all be a perfect oval. That makes them a little more realistic looking if they're all just a little different or a little wonky even. 
And the same exact techniques I'll show you for this, you can use for any colors. You want to do it in a pink or a red tulip. You would start with the dark, dark maroon, like we're gonna start with almost like a brownie gold color and build up lighter, lighter. You could paint the same um, technique and do different colored tulips. I'm gonna go a little dark. I like the way some of the darks and the lights look. So I'm gonna go a little darker in that corner. And you can see it pretty much did go from this side all the way over and down. Each, you know, it's a little dry up here now maybe, but it's wet where I wanna blend. I use a couple of different techniques a lot in my painting. One is blending the wet and wet, and the other is like a dry brush. So we'll probably do a little of both of those tonight. Shelby, yes, you could, and it wouldn't be too light. I think that would be fine. That would be kind of fun, watering it down. You could just add water and do it like a watercolor technique, doing the same thing, saying I've got a light watery blue here. Oh, maybe you've lost that on the bottom. Let me pull it up. So same like a little watercolor technique. And then you can still, with just water on your brush, go into your lights and darks and blend it the same way. And I would like that little see-through look. So I would go ahead and try that. I'd love to see that, that watercolor look. Remember, it, pretty much anything goes, so. And I did actually, on the bottom here, you can see it's a little darker. That I put in afterwards. Watery like a watercolor. I did like a black into my blue, really dark navy with a little water on my brush. And that will do later on when the rest of it is dry. Oh, yeah. Bangor is up further up than me, Catherine, here. It's still a little ways. Maine is such a huge state. I'm right in Wells, which is the southern coast, uh, not far at all from home and not far from, you know, New Hampshire even. I have friends that tease me and say it's not really Maine at all. It's really New Hampshire or Massachusetts. Okay. And since it is drying a little bit, I think I'm going to go ahead and show you that dry brush technique of adding a little white on here if you want to or if you want to lighten it up. I know it's a little shiny, so it's got a little glare, but can you see I'm very rough with my brushes. That's the style I like but you might want to finesse it more and have it much more blended and that's perfectly fine. All you would do is just continue on just with the brush, softening and blending. You could get it as blended or keep it as rough as you like, but that's an option. You have that. You don't have to have it really rough like mine. I like it even a little rougher, so I'm going to just dry my brush off. I, I, I will um, urge you to wash your brushes well, but when I'm using a big brush like this and I'm gonna go right back into it with a different color, I just wipe the brush off first and don't wash it till I'm, till I'm done with what I'm doing. Your little detail brushes and things, um, your smaller acrylic brushes, I do urge you to rinse them off in between when you're not using them, not to, not to sit them on the side and let the paint harden because then they, they're hard to come back from that to get a nice tip and get them back into shape. Okay, so my brush is just dry. Of course, it has a little blue still, which is fine. And when I dry brush, I just take a little of the paint and I wipe most of it off, either on my palette or on my paper towel. When I go and dry brush something on, I want it very light. I'm using a super light touch, almost like you're putting on blush or makeup, very light. And I'd rather have it so you can't even see it almost and then build it up than to go too heavy with the paint and have a big glob. So I just want to do some of these crisscrosses and I'm gliding right across the top of the dried paint and it's just giving me some little texture because the canvas is textured. See, it's just little textured strokes. They're neither here nor there, but if you like them, you could try them. I am just gonna lightly go over some of the areas which just need a little something. When I need to take paint again, really it's very little, wipe most of it off and I'm just going to add a little something. Now as the paint dries is when you're going to see if some of the white of the canvas is showing through. The canvas is textured. Unless you really jab your brush in there, you will have some white areas, which are not really noticeable till it dries because of the shine. So if you see now you got little white areas, you can certainly go back and kind of touch them up. I don't even mind them in some places. I do have some areas though along the edge of my boot that I know when I paint my boot, they're gonna show because I didn't go all the way in enough. So I'm going to just go back now and just so that it's a nicer line by my boot, I'm gonna do that just so I have not so many of those little white areas showing. 
And if you're doing the watercolor wash, um, Shelby, on that, you don't have to worry about that. The water, when you have the paint a little wa more watery, it goes right into those little bits of white areas showing. So it even helps just to put a little water on your brush. I'll move my water over so you can see when I'm grabbing water. Um, it, it just sinks right into those little holes with the, with the water on the brush. All right. So except for the edges, which can be done later, I don't want to waste time doing that. I want to show you what we're going to do as we move forward. But that's pretty much it for the background. It dries pretty quick. So while we're getting the colors ready for painting the flowers, this will dry enough and I won't, I paint on every sleeve I own anyways, but we're going to work. Um, we're going to work now on steps. We're going to work all the uh, greenery first. I will paint what's in the very background, we'll move forward. Many times, most times, that's how I will paint everything. I paint landscapes, whatnot. So the green in the background, then we'll do the tulips, and then we can work down and do the boots. So pretty simple. There's not a lot of elements in this. And you could even actually, you know, I'm thinking I did all yellow tulips, but you could mix them up too. So that would be, uh, you know, kind of fun if you want different colors. But so what I said about the background, when I start, I do very dark, almost a black green. So let me show you how I'm going to mix that. All right, so I've got that phthalo green, which is just a really primary green, and my yellow. But I'm going to take some black and some blue, maybe, into this green. Because to start, I just want, and it's a very blue-green to begin with. Can you see how nice and dark and rich that, that is? It's, it's almost black, but it's not. It still has a green-blue tone to it. I'm gonna be a little careful going around my tulips because if I hit them with this dark color, yellow is such a transparent color, it would be tough to um, get the yellow to show. But there is an easy fix if that happens. You could just paint over anything or if you were painting tulips on a dark background, say you had painted this all blue to start, I would do my tulips with white first, maybe even two coats if I needed to, then your yellow will pop. Yellow is so translucent, it would take so many so many coats to get it to cover. So we're gonna go around them a little more carefully than I would if they were going to be painted in a dark color or a pink or, I mean, or a red or a maroon. So I'm just painting, I'm not gonna go out on the edges yet for the, for the leaves or anything. I am just gonna go in and kind of just color block in around my tulips. I think I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush for that. And when I'm gonna paint flat here for you because it's easiest for you to see. When I'm painting, and I may still have to, lots of times, don't worry, you can take the you can take the painting off the easel if you have it on an easel, and you can paint. Sometimes I need to paint upside down or sideways, whatever works for you. You can move that painting around. So I'm just outlining where I need to. That dark green. Again, any questions as we go along, please just pop in with them. I'm right here watching. I may have to even, well, no, I'm going to do a little bit of the darker brown first. I was going to say, if I need to, I can always touch up some of these with the white paint too. But uh, we are going to start with that dark brown. So it's probably fine to keep them without base coating. I keep adding a little black as I need to darken that up. I know I have a stem here, but I'm going to paint right over it. We'll put that in when we're doing some of, them, some of the nice light greens afterwards. So this is an appropriate painting, as I was saying, the weather that we've been having with all the rain. So it is spring showers, and uh, hopefully they're behind us. Because I can't believe it's June already. Boy, oh boy. And a lot of times when you have areas like this, you can use a little round brush or a little square, kind of outline first, and then you can use a bigger brush or just not be have to be as careful when you're filling in the other areas. And we are going to block in our, um, we're going to even block in our leaves too afterwards, so. Okay, so I'm getting most of the inside there done, just to get that out of the way. And like I said, we're going to move from the background forward. Okay, now, leaves. The tulips have those nice long leaves. 
And I love my flat brush because you can get a wide stroke. Look, you can get a nice wide stroke there. But on the chisel edge, and I'm going to grab a piece of paper so you can see. Just I have a little pad of a sketchbook here. Just to show you the versatility of a um, flat brush because, honestly, I don't use a lot of brushes. And I have a few sizes in the flat. And when you want to, you can get just a nice wide line. But you could get, if you have a nice chisel edge on that, look at how thin you can get a line. And for these leaves, you could use a big wider brush and you can almost just press the brush down a bit and then tip it to, and then sort of lift up a little so it's getting a little thinner. And I just twist the brush and look at you can get those nice tails. So you could get some nice long leaves for these tulips by just pressure, twist it nice and thin. I, I keep promising, and I will, it's on my list of things to do, is to get some brush stroke um, practice sheets for you guys, because I do a lot of brush stroke painting, roses and flowers and leaves, just in one stroke. So I will um, get that going. But I wanted you to see how versatile your brush could be. I do use round brushes, of course, too, but you can get nice thin lines with those uh, flat brushes. Okay, Bear, um, Luke didn't find a link. Okay, well, uh, the link will be on the Tinker's Cart art page too. And I believe I put it in the description here on um, Facebook, but I'll try to put that in for you again. And I'll, and I'll send it with, out with the, um, well, I would need your email from that link um, to send you that. But we'll have it in the Tinker's Cart art page. Take a look, sign up there, and then you'll get the tracer and then I will send you the video. The video will also live on the page, and I put it on YouTube. So if you go and follow my YouTube channel, which is Tinker's Cart Art, you will see this pop up there tomorrow, too. So that would be fine. So here's your right. I, I, I'm not going to really have to copy this exactly. I just, I just like to paint. These leaves are kind of falling down like this way. And once the boots are painted, if you wanted, you could even put some right over the boots. So that technique was just pressing the brush down. I wiggle it a little bit, and then I get a nice thin tail. Now, that's a little bit of practice to get that brush stroke, but you can certainly just use your liner brush and follow the tracer if, if you thought that that would be a little easier for you. If you're just a beginner painter, that that is fine too. I even come in with some of the lighter paint and make little leaves that aren't even going to be in the dark. Now, we're going to add those later. So I'm just some bent down coming out over the boots and then I sort of do some straight ones. And now I'm gonna go back to my wider brush cause I could do a better job with those. Some go right off the edge, some can be angled. And I'm just eyeballing them and putting them here and there. No rhyme or reason. You can go by the tracer if you wish or you can just freehand them on. I'm sort of almost cheating here just to cover that little bit of white. It doesn't have to be the same shape, but if I see little bits of white there rather than go back with the blue, I may just cover them up with the green. And you can see even already the paint is thickening up a little bit. I am adding water to my paint a lot as I go, especially if I'm doing a little detail work. I'm adding a little black as I go into that green. But if it drags on me, I go and add a little water, just kind of mix it in as I go. You don't have to suffer, you know, struggle with the paint. Get it to a nice consistency. So anyone have any questions about doing those leaves like that? Just with the flat brush, I, it's kind of a nice, easy way to do it. Is there a better way to put it? Um, I do have the tracer in the supply list. There is a button for Dropbox, and you can go there. I have it in all different sizes. Or just send me a private message on Facebook, and you can give me your email there. I'll make sure I add you to the list, and then I'll get you the supply list and everything out. But I do have all the, all the sizes. When I do a painting and there's a tracer involved, I will do most sizes that I can think of. But if anyone has a special size, they just send me an email or a message, and I just create the create a new size and send it out to them. So yeah, we can get you the patent easily.
Now, I don't wanna really build up my lighter colors yet until that's drier. So I think while we are waiting for that to dry, and we don't wanna to touch our tulips yet because those are still wet around, let's base coat in our boots. And here's how I would do something like the boots, regardless of the color you're using. I'm gonna get a new palette here. And whatever color you want your boots is what we're gonna base coat them all in first. And then I might just re-wet them, and so I can work wet and wet to get the darks and the lights. So I usually paint my object in, and if I can work fast enough and it can stay wet, I will just work wet and wet and blend. I can also do it afterwards with a shadow and a highlight by watering the paint down. So there's different techniques, and, and I'll show them to you as we go along. Okay, so I'm doing my pink boots. So I am going to move that so you can see. I'm gonna use some red and white. And I also gonna grab some black from my palette there because I am going to use some uh, black to make a dark maroon for my shading. But right now, all I wanna do is paint these white boots red. Just to get started, cover up the white of the canvas. Again, I just use my flat synthetic for these, just for blocking in. Pretty simple, I really, um, these synthetic brushes are, like I said, they're pretty inexpensive. And if you keep them clean and in, in, in shape, they will last a long time. I know we all have brushes that are all splayed and their little hairs are going every which way like they've had a bad hair day. It, a little tip, if you want to try to save them again, you can run them, um, you know, pour boiling water from a tea kettle or something in the sink and run it over them or a little, little pan or something and dip them really hot boiling water, and then when, when you know when it's cooler, just shape them again. Even on a bar of ivory soap. Bar of ivory soap is great for cleaning your brushes. You'll see how much paint you get out of it after you think it's clean. And you can use that soap to sort of reshape them. And then while you, they're stored, you know, keep them point up and they will last a long time even though they're not an expensive brush. So I use a couple sizes of these flats. I have a few nice rounds that I like. And if you actually happen to have an Ocean State job lot nearby, I buy these brushes here. They're three in a pack for $2.97, and they are amazing. I wear them. I mean, I wear them. I use them for my paint nights in person, and they, they wear, and they're tough. And, they, and you know, as long as we clean them out well, you can get a package of two flats, which are just the sizes I use. It's a 10, I believe, and a 10 and um, a 12. And it comes with a round. So there's that in one set. And then the other set is some rounds. And if you have one uh, job lot near you, great bargain, I think. I go and I stock up on them all the time. So let's mix us up some pink, whatever shade you like. I'm just using primary red and some white. That's a nice shade. So I am just going to paint the whole thing. If you, if you really want to save this line that you've traced, you could almost just do like this so you know where it is. I would myself just probably sketch that on. You could sketch it on with a pencil or a little piece of chalk afterwards. But if you're afraid of losing that little line, you can just do something like this just to give you just a basic idea of where that, that line is. But not really important because we can really just sketch that in after if we need to. And it's just base coating right now. This pink is covering very well. If you had a color that was a little translucent, block it all in, but let it dry well, and then go back over it. If you go to do a second coat of something because it's translucent or, or for whatever reason, if you do it too soon and the paint isn't dry, you're just pulling off the color you put on. So just let it dry really well in between. And if the paint's dragging a little bit, you can always add a little water. You don't need that. And I'm just, like I said, just covering up the white of that canvas for now. It's a nice middle of the road color because we get a lot of um, way, you know, we can go with a nice dark for the shadow. We can go a little lighter with white for the highlight. When you do a shadow and a highlight on an object, it really gives it dimension. It makes it look rounded and three-dimensional. So I do start with it just very flat, but we will add some dimension to that. I'll show you how. Pretty cinchy. I 
make sure I don't miss any of your comments or questions. Just pop them in there if you need them. Then you need something answered. And if you want to, if you like the, my teaching style and you want to paint more, like I said, on the YouTube channel, there are quite a few paintings there as well. I think some of them, of course, are under videos on the Facebook page. But just follow me at Tinker's Cart Art and you will be notified or even on my email list, that's a link on the Facebook page there to sign up. And I'll keep you notified when I'm doing some classes. It's a little bit like coloring, isn't it? Just filling in paint by number a little bit. So I can, it's covering very nicely, but I can see how I went over the blue a little bit. So you can still see it, but that's no worries because we're going to actually do a little dark on that edge anyway, or we would just go back and do another coat where we needed it. So don't worry if you can see the paint underneath at all. Okay, it's just about done. And I like the coverage. So I'm gonna show you a little wet and wet technique to put the shadows in, okay? And this gives us a little guide, so that's good. And we're gonna go in with our dark and it will cover that little light line there anyway. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some of, I'm going to use a really maroon for the Shadow. So the shadows on the on the right hand side there, the right hand side here across the bottom, and afterwards with a small round brush we'll put a little dark here. Looks like it just gives the boot like it's it's in, going to the inside of the boot. But when I do shading and highlighting, I like to do it if I can while it's wet and wet. And like I said, sometimes I'll even re-wet it. So what I'm going to do is I want a maroon. So I don't want to use that pink I had on the brush. I want to mix some black with my red. So I don't want it to be in the white. I just want the black and the red now. And I've got that nice deep maroon, almost looks a little purpley. It's a nice deep color. I'm just using a little flat brush here. And I'd like to go about the width of that brush. And my pink paint is still pretty wet. So let's just start by taking just a brush load of that dark down the right side. And it's okay that it blends in with the, the pink. That's perfectly fine. We want it to blend. Oops. And there, just along that side. I'm going to work with just this for now because I don't want to go and put it here and then have it dry on me. Whenever I'm doing dry brush techniques or even this kind of wet and wet, I always have a paper towel on my hand. I want to get the extra paint off my brush. So now I'm really just using the dry brush to blend. I have no color, you know, no paint on there really. And because this pink is still wet, it may just work without us re-wetting the pink. I'm just going to drag my flat brush halfway onto the dark, halfway onto the pink. And I'm kind of going back and forth, just wanting to blend the edge. Dry it off because you've accumulated some paint on there. Just the dry brushes for our blending. And back down here. You can almost go in one fell swoop. But I want to move that paint a little bit. It is getting a little sticky, so that's why I'm using these little strokes. It's kind of wiped off on the very edge on me a little bit. So what I'm going to do is grab some more dark. Now is when you just look at it and say, oh, is it dark enough, light enough? But I want it darker on that edge. It's, it, it should be darkest on the edge, getting lighter as it goes onto the boot. So I'm just going to re-wet that with a little of the really dark maroon. Paint is kind of thick, which is fine because that gives it more time um, for me to blend with it. And again, I'm just taking the color off now. I'm just gonna softly go down and get that nice, see that nice dark on the very edge? That I like that look. So the blending does is a little bit of a technique and it takes a little while to get the hang of it. It's something that you can be practicing, but it does look nice on the edge there. Dry brush, I'm just keep drying my brush off so I don't see those streaks. And now, where this is, see it's pretty dry now here, if it's too much of a line, it's, it's a little blended, but a bit of a line. I'm gonna go back into my pink, 
And this is what I was talking about, about re-wetting some areas. I'm going to just go in with the pink now and try to get, match that color. That was a bit light. I'm going to get it back to the same shade. Now I'm going almost just re-wetting the pink. I haven't even gone into the dark yet. I'm just going up against it. So I have a nice bit of wet paint drying off my brush. And now I'm really going to give that a good blend. You see I'm working from the dark into the light, into the lighter pink, dark pink into the lighter and back again. And I'm just softening that back and forth. Now, I am a big oil painter, and that is the luxury of oil painting, is that you have lots of time for this blending. But acrylics are much easier to work in and much easier to clean up from. I got a little bit of pink on my green. It's not a big deal. But can you see that's a much nicer blend now? So that is a little uh, technique of wet on wet blending. Where this is um, dry, what I'm going to do, I want it to be light on the fronts. Actually, no, you know, we're going to continue with the dark. Let's do our dark here, then we'll do both our lights. That way we, we can wash the brush after. So I'm going to repeat the same thing on the right side of that boot. I'm going to go back into my dark. Just the, it's, Again, it's just the red with some black. About the, the width of that brush, that brush is a... 10, it looks like. It looks a little smaller than a 10 to me, but this one is a 10. Putting the paint on fairly thick because I want to have some time to blend it. I'm just going to follow it right down like that. And now I will just go and rinse that off so that I can get the pink again. Again, working kind of quickly. And I'm going to go and get that same shade of pink that we were using for the boot. A little thick and I'm going to go right like I said almost not touching this color yet I'm just going to go up against it just what I'm doing is just re-wetting the dry paint so I can do a wet and wet blend dry it off and then at this brush we're just going to kind of scrub it and blend it with the brush the dry brush and as you're blending with the dry brush you're going to pick up paint and if you feel like you're getting too much on there just dry it off again and just keep working all you're doing is working where the dark meets the light you're bringing some of the light in towards that dark maroon. You're bringing some of that maroon out. Just keep brushing at it until you get a nice blend there. And I am going to show you how to do it as a wash, too, if you like that technique. But So look at that. That's a nice blend. And once we get the light on the other side, and I did do the dark around the bottom here, as you can see. We're going to do it the same way. We'll go with our dark. We must use all the areas of dark that we need. It might not go as thick of a line there, but look at I'm just using the same brush, a good amount of paint, kind of on the chisel edge. Maybe just there. And we'll dry that and get back into that pink. And I'm gonna mix a little pink up to match. I'm gonna go right against it like we just did. We can do both of these little sections at once. And it's a good time to, uh, we had a little bit of the blue showing through, so we're just going right over that. Okay, now again with the dry brush, we'll just dry that off. And again, we're just, I'm, I'm, I have my brush positioned half on the pink, half on the maroon. And I'm just back and forth, sometimes dragging it. If it looks like the, we need a little more dark, I sort of drag it up. But that's, that's is, is good enough. We're going to have our polka dots on there and our highlights, so you don't have to overwork it. You could just, just get a little bit of a shadow in there. All right. Now, why don't we get our highlights, because you're going to see how nice that looks. And then afterwards, we'll just take... I actually um, painted the little boot bottoms here with the dark color, and then after went with the light on top. So we'll do that in the little dark here after we finish the highlighting. And it's just a matter of the white. And if your paint is really thick and globby, you know, add a little water. That's okay. And actually, it's not straight white on there. That might be too bright. I think it's just a little bit lighter pink. So I'm going to let a little bit of pink get in there. So it's going to be a very light pink. That's all. Light pink. 
and I'm going to go across the top edge. And I think we can work fast enough that we could do both. So I'm going to try to do both. And with this, we're going to get covered our little white line that was we were using as the guide there. All right. And I'm going to dry off my brush. I think that pink's dry, so let's put a little more pink back. That's the same color we use for our boots. And I just adjust it on the fly. And you know, if it's not exactly the same, it's okay. But I like to have objects have different colors of the shade, different shades of the color in there. I'm just trying to get the paint wet next to each other. Drying off my brush. I'm not too worried about it being exact. And now I got my brush half on that very light pink, half on that middle pink. It's a little sticky, but if you just scrub your brush back and forth, you can blend it. And if the paint dries and it's not budging for you, don't panic. Just like, just do what I did again, just re-wet it. This paint I put on is a little lighter than the boot. Just with the dry brush, I'm kind of just softening it in, and I kind of like the way that looks. Back over here, same thing. It's a little dried on us, but I am able to move that with the paintbrush. Can you see now how it's really coming forward against that dark shadow from the other boot? There. And again, don't be worrying too much because we have all those cool polka dots on there afterwards. I have a little bit of the white of the canvas showing through, so I am just going back with that same pink and just getting that covered up. Although I could very well just put a polka dot on there. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse that off. I'm gonna to go to my little round brush now because I just want a little depth where these dark areas are. It's the color we had mixed up. It's a little more detailed and the paint has been sitting, so I really am watering that down a good bit. So adding some water to my paint. And I'm going to just go in here. So this is almost like the inside of the boot, just along here. Some of these little things like aren't real important details, but it's a little something. And I'm going to do my little uh, bottoms there. So just paint those in in the dark maroon. They can be see-through and transparent. We're gonna cover them with the light pink. It just, when you put a light on top of a dark, it really works nicely. And we'll just get the shape of that heel there from these little rain boots. How are we all doing? Is, is, are many of you painting along with me? And how is it coming? Or are you observing and going to paint on your own later? Try not to put my palette on top of there so you can see the painting. and been covering that up a little bit. And like I said, this is very detailed work with the little round brush in the paint. I like it more like an ink consistency, so I would add a good bit of water to that. And I would move this around a little bit. And then when that dries, we'll just highlight it with some pink. And there we are with our boots. Pretty cute, right? I'll let them dry. We'll come back to do the dots and the little pink down here. And when that's all dry, we will put that little dark shade. Can you see how they're sort of floating in the air here? But once you put a little um, shadow under them, it sits them down and uh, wakes them. And they don't look like they're floating. Okay, we'll go back and let's do our leaves. I'm going to mix up a little bit lighter shade of green now. And I'm going to do a couple of um, coats. I'll do a middle shade of green and then I'll do a lighter shade and, and then I go with a real light, a little bit lighter shade as well. I like to have a lot of dimension. Some of these I've left the dark showing on parts of it and it just lends itself well to look like a shaded part of the leaf or a turned over part, but it's not planned. It's just sort of throw on those colors and you get that look. Okay, let's get a lighter green here. I'm going to use that same flat brush. And I love the greens I get when I mix the primary yellow in this phthalo green. You can get some beautiful shades. And sometimes I don't even know yet when I put them on if they're going to show. And I may have to come back and add a little more yellow or some white. But I've just mixed up a medium shade right here now. 
And I'm going to try it. And I'm really going just on top of what I did. I'm not worrying too much about copying exactly the, you know, filling in the leaf exactly as I have it. I'm just roughly going on top of the dark with a little bit of the lighter. It's very subtle. You don't really see it too much. It's just very lightly there. But that's the way I'd like to build it up very subtly. And I am just flattening the brush out, twisting a little bit, pulling it off. And I am just kind of following my leaves. But sometimes you could do one by yourself because then you've got a bit, little bit of a different shade and that lends itself nicely to that. And I'll just keep going back into the yellow and green and mixing it up. I'm just going on top of each leaf very lightly. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't have to be exact. I'm just putting it on each one. And the rougher you work and the less you think about it perfectly, you're going to like the results a little better than trying to get it so precise and perfect because they really wouldn't be that way. In between the tulips, we're going to just add the same colors that we're working with. I'm just dabbing it in there. And at the end, we'll make them some of their little stems, but just kind of get some lights and darks in behind them as well. And then I just get lighter and lighter. So now I'm going to go with quite a bit of yellow, maybe a little white because when the color is very transparent like that yellow and that yellow green, you add a little white to it, you get a little more opaque coverage. Whenever you have something that's really translucent and it's not working for you, add a tiny bit of white. If you're doing like the center of a flower, say you had a rose and you want a little yellow bits in the middle and you've got a dark colored rose and the yellow, you'd never get it to cover. Put all your little dots or your centers in in white, and then when it's dry, go back and get your yellow in there, and it will work much better for you. These are still wet a bit, but oh, it's still working though. So I've gone very light. I've got a lot of yellow and a little white just for the opaque quality. And sometimes I can use just that for a petal. And now I'm not going onto the petal and following it exact. Can you see I'm sort of popping it on there, stopping, starting. I am just very loosely you see how quick that little stroke? Let me do some closer to the camera for you. So I'm going back getting some yellow and some white. Let me try to do it so you can see it a little closer. So I'm not putting it on and following exactly what I did. I'm sort of putting it on there and just stopping, starting, wiggling it. Sometimes it goes right off the leaf. It could be by itself. It could be here and there. But I like when you put it on without... Being precise or thinking about it, you still have your dark showing here and there. So, and, it, and this one could be dark in the back and you could take this one and make it more in the front and going off by itself. There's no rhyme or reason, there's no right or wrong. Just start dark and just get lighter and lighter. And some, like I said, just by themselves, just some little light ones by themselves. This is a big wide one here. So I'm going to do this on top and make it look like it's one going on top there. As the paint dries, it may sink into that dark color. And then we'll just let it sit for a little bit and we'll highlight it a little more. As many steps as you need till it's how you like it. This is a good time to take that light color in here. Say we even a little more white to that and yellow because we want it really light. Because these would have stems. So I'm almost just gonna use the chisel edge and just make a stem. So they have something to support them. Wherever there might be a stem, we can just do that. And you can also make just little ones coming out behind if you need to, just to make it so it's not so dark in the back there. You want to lighten it up here and there, but that works, I think. And there, a little more white even, making a super light color, that really light apple green. Just if you want here and there, you can make some of those, putting those kind of by themselves, coming out here and there. What do you think? I think that works. It looks very dark. Sometimes actually me looking at it on the camera helps a lot and that is a little tip. If you're working on a painting and it looks a little wonky or something's off and you can't quite figure it out, hold it up in front of a mirror or take a picture of it. Because when I look at it in the camera here, I can see things that I need to address more than just looking at it with my eye. It looks very dark just in these spots on the camera. Not so much in person, but I, I'm going to just kind of give it some real lights here and there. That brightens it up a little bit. 
This is really light. This is almost a yellow and just a little bit of white. And so when I tell you I like to work dark to light because things pop, look at now, if I wanted to give a little highlight to one of the stems or one of the leaves, look at how that light color pops. If we had started with a medium green or a Kelly green and put that on top, it wouldn't make that impact. But because we had the darks working up to the lights, you could throw a few little really super duper lights in there and really pops. I sometimes get carried away and have to just stop. You can put as many leaves in as you want. I think that's good. I'm gonna let it go. But you go ahead and do whatever you wish um, on yours because you can get all kinds of fun shades in there. Catherine tried to. Oh, good idea. Yep, do it in steps. Sometimes working in steps is nice, little tiny bite-sized pieces. And I do put a post up on the page for all of us to share our painting. So I'd love to see yours when you're done. I'm looking at this on the camera now and it almost looks like it would be cool to maybe have done some white tulips. Look at how those would pop on there. That might be fun too, to do something like that. But anyways, our tulips are pretty dry. I mean, the dry around them pretty much. And I'm gonna show you what I do. I'm going to use some of this as my dark. My This is my very dark, the burnt sienna. Then I got the gold and I've got some yellow. Yellow, we're gonna to have to mix with some white. I'm gonna keep this plate handy because I may wanna mix my yellows on that. It looks very Valentine's-y. <laughs> it's like we're painting for Valentine's Day. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm gonna mix a little of these together just to base my tulips in. Cause again, like I said, I start dark. Don't know if I wanna start as dark as straight burnt sienna. So let's just mix a little in with the gold. Now, if you don't have that gold color, if you take some of your yellow and take a tiny bit of brown and maybe a tiny bit of red if you don't have a burnt sienna and you could um, tone your, your primary yellow down into that color. I'm going to paint them right in. I can see the little lines underneath from the tracing if you need that, but we're going to just freehand on some of the petals afterwards. And what was important, like I said, is just to make them a little different, not all the same. So we're just going to take that gold, maybe the tiniest bit of burnt sienna, and let's just base coat my um, the tulips in. And they can even change shape as you're doing this. If you have to cover something, like I have a few bits and pieces here that I can see the background, I'll just change the shape of the tulips. That's the thing is you don't want them all perfect little ovals. Some could be a little pointy on the bottom. Some could be more rounded. Just mix them up, even if you've traced them on and you, you can change the shape up a little bit if you want. And we're just getting, it's not really a nice color, but it's a good starting point for our yellow tulips. And again, this paint's drying and getting a little draggy here. Feel free to add some water to that. And, and vary even, even your shade, your first color that we do, you can vary that up. This one's going to be a little more yellow then. That would help later on for them to be a little different and not all the same. And I'm, and I'm guilty of that. I tend to start and do them all identical. I'm really working on trying to be conscious of making them look a little bit different. Some could be flatter on the top. Some could have a little petal sticking up. So I'm gonna to try to do that on these. Some are more closed and some could be the petals could be open a little more. Observe things, that's, that's another thing I was gonna to talk to you about is um, starting like inspiration boards and observing everything. So you could go onto Pinterest, you could just make a photo album in your, al in your photos inspirational photos, I have them divided up into like floral, landscape, oh, seascape, that sort of thing. But just to give you ideas, so when you go to paint a painting with tulips, even if it's one that's a trip with a tracer and it's a, it's a class or whatnot, really look at some other inspiration and that will give you so many ideas, color choices, shapes, lights and darks and how to paint them. It's nice to have that little, little uh, library built up to go to. And then start even with your own photographs, even better, because then you can start developing your own paintings, just putting different elements in there. Um, I, I, I do whole painting classes like this, you'll see, but then I also do little tutorials sometimes of just of a wave, so you can practice waves, and of trees, you can practice trees or clouds. And then you have all those little building blocks to create your own paintings. Even ideas for color palettes. So a lot of times when I'm painting, I like to keep my color palette 
kind of tight, I would just pick four colors, five colors, and then do the whole painting using those colors, of course, dark, dark shades, light shades, mixing them amongst each other. But it really keep, keeps, you know, makes for a nice painting that looks very cohesive. And, um, and I don't know, it just really makes for a nice painting without having all kinds of colors from all the whole spectrum thrown in. And you get a lot of color ideas from your photographs too. I actually think, I forget, it was one of the paint companies. I'll have to look it up. There's a couple of apps for taking your photo and it would just break the colors down into a color palette for you. So if you see something you like, and you might not know why, why you're attracted to it, why you like it, but you break down that color palette and you can just use that as a starting point. I've been working a lot with turquoises and pinks lately. I don't know, that's my late, latest color palette, like a, a nice sagey green and turquoise and make this one a little darker. So if you wanted to do a different color flower, like I said, it, it would be pretty much the same technique. So say you wanted white tulips that they look kind of cool. We thought that looked cool. I would shade them with like a blue gray. I don't like to use black and grays unless I can add a little blue or something to them. It just seems, I don't know what it is. I just don't, I like color. I paint color with a lot of color. I paint whimsical things. Um, I don't do too much with gray. So I would use a tiny bit of black and some blue and make up a kind of a blue gray. And that's what I would start my tulip with. I would use that as my dark. And then get just lighter and lighter with those shades and end up with just white. Um, as your highlights, you can draw a little gold. Sometimes they have that little yellowy, this gold color is nice. So you could experiment with different tulips and you could paint them. You know, if you had like a mixed media pad, this is just a sketchbook I had over here, but a mixed media pad is nice to practice your paintings in. The paint dries a little faster, it's a little draggier, but it's a good place if you don't wanna dive in and, 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 and feel too much pressure to work on the canvas, you could paint the whole painting in your media mixed media pad which you can still pull that page out and mat and frame it and it's lovely. Or you could just go ahead and do your brush strokes. You can paint your brush strokes. You could paint just the flowers. It's a good place to try different color schemes. And then when you go to your painting, you, you're, um, you really know where you're, what direction you're taking. Okay, so I think those are good. I have a little bit of um, white canvas showing there. So I'm gonna just go in and touch up, make a few leaves there and that will be, that will cover that up a little bit. All right, just to get that so I don't have to go back and paint the blue, I'm just taking a little bit of my colors I was using for my leaves, and I'm just going to make some leaves in there. Do I see any little white areas? Okay. Oh, one right here. Okay, so that is that. I have a little few places where I've dabbed paint by accident. So a little a way to fix that is if it's wet, you could just wet a little paper towel. You can always paint over it. And if you get it really someplace you really don't want it, on some furniture or, or, or your clothes sometimes, um, rubbing alcohol does loosen that paint up. So that's a thought too for the, for the, or you know what I would do for those since they're dry, I would just go back to my color I use for Just few places. So. Okay, and we're back. I'm not sure what happened there, but a little, a little glitch. Okay, so I'm going to take. Let me use my round brush for this. Just a round brush, or square brush, whatever. And I'm going to make that shadow with the paint kind of watercolory. So I'm going to get a good amount of water on my brush, and it's pretty much just a dark blue, it's a little black with that blue. And again, I'd rather go a little too light and build it up than go too heavy. So you can see how thin the paint is here. Just thinned a little bit of black and a little bit of blue. And I'm just gonna wash it. It's very watery. I'm gonna add even a little more water. It's just on the, on the, around the top of this one, on the bottom and around. So can you see I'm sort of almost just blending it as I go. It's very watery. 
I'm going to go and dry my brush now. And just soften that. And that very well could be done with a flat brush too. It's a little watercolor technique. It just sits that boot down on the table. Could we have done that wet and wet? We could have. We could have just taken that color, painted it under the boot, gone back and taken our background color real quick next to it, and then just scrubbed it like we did. But I'd like to show you a couple different techniques that you can try. So it's just a little bit of a dark. There we go. You can kind of see there. So that's that. And then on top, I am going to use my flat brush for that. I'm going back to that light pink we had. Just going to make it a little lighter. I'm not going to try to paint the little boot uh, bottoms in perfectly. I am just going to, I just want to go a little lighter than my boot. And I'm just, it's almost the right width. I'm just going to go right across there. I'm on top of the dark. And see how that just makes that little bit pop out? You didn't really even see them before, so I am just doing the same thing. I'm just kind of going on top of the dark. I'm not worried about touching the edges. I almost like that. There's a little bit of, um, this is too soft to do it sideways. You can, there's a little bit of the dark showing on each on each edge. Same here, which is, it's under the boot a little bit, and then it's on the top. I don't know why, it just, it just pops, it's kind of nice. And we can do, we'll go, we're, gonna, we're gonna do our tulips next and then we'll finish with the little dots. We have some tricks for those I'll show you. But these are dry already pretty much for me. We've got the darkest we're gonna use there. I am going to mix up my lighter colors. I'm gonna get some more on the flat brush here. And I'm going to put on, I'm gonna show this to you a little closer. There. We're going to mix up like a lighter gold first. We're going to do then a brighter yellow and then a little white on the edges where the petals are. I may go back. I think I may go back sometimes if I need to in, in with a watery burnt sienna, just kind of outline some to make them pop. But we'll see if it needs that at the end. So right now, let's just get gold. We've got a couple of shades of that gold. This is pretty much like what we have there so I'm going to use both palettes because I want to mix it with a little white and I don't have much room over here so I do make kind of a mess when I'm painting. I'm mixing some of that gold with some white. I'm not going to paint in the whole tulip. I'm going to pretend I'm following the shape of the petals. So for instance on this guy, let me move them both over because you, I'd rather have you see the paintings than the palette if we have to. Okay. So we're gonna go right on top here. So we're gonna do this one first, say. And I can see my line through, but even if you didn't, I'm going to paint in the direction of the petal. So this petal here kind of curves over and it goes down like this. I did it pretty light because you can still almost see the color behind it and on the edge. So I'm not taking the color and pa painting it in like we did the boots perfectly. I am just sort of following the shape. So on this side of this petal, it's gonna be one big petal. I'm going to just kind of do this. And what I'm doing is I'm on purpose leaving a little line there so that that would be a little bit of a shadow. This petal is sitting on top. This petal's on the side. This is sitting on top. We cast a little shadow. But instead of painting it all so carefully and shading and whatnot, just that doing it that way gives you that illusion of it. Okay. So this is a little more tightly closed little guy. So he's a little pointed on the top. So this petal on this side is sort of starts up here, gets a little wider, and kind of ends a little bit to a point. So this is going to be, say, a petal that's shaped like this over here, leaving that little spot. Here I am doing like the same sort of thing when I said I was going to try to be a little different, but I'm going to leave it for now. And I'm going to mix up some of them, because like I said, this is very similar to this. So sometimes you could just make a petal, petal that's in the middle, right? So I'm sort of painting just petals in, in a lighter color, leaving a little line between them to, to define them. And then it also looks like a little shadow. This might have one that comes down like here and in. And this one I'm going to have a little bit flatter on the top. And so you can see I'm... I'm just imagining what the petals would look like and just painting a petal shape. You could have photos of tulips in front of you or real tulips and kind of follow their shapes. Sometimes they have a little petal behind here. 
This one's going to be a little more open. And then we'll just do this. And we'll make this one kind of go like this, maybe. It's a little square looking to it. And as I go, I just take a little more of that gold and add the white. I didn't really mix up enough. And I almost rather do it this way than mix up a bunch of gold that's the right shade, say, and use that. I'd rather have it a little bit off when I'm mixing it on the fly like that. Sometimes it's lighter and sometimes it's darker. And it makes for some interesting tulips. Okay. So this guy will have a little one on the back. We'll make a big wide. If you lose the line, it's not a big deal. We can, like I said, go back in with a little wash of burnt sienna after. We're just going to start building up to a yellow, but we're going to do this, these colors first. Sometimes they have that shape for a leaf, that little, I don't know, that little rounded bit, teardrop shape. And it almost could even have like a little one in the back there that we wouldn't have seen. Sometimes they're frilly, a little bit like a little action like that. It could be a panel like that. One back here. They're really fun once you get going and start playing around with them and not stressing about them too much, just sort of having fun. This guy will have just a little thin bit there and kind of really turn over. So that really is like a teardrop shape. It would be a little darker under here. This guy over here is not really sitting on top of this one, but this one is. So we will darken that little shadow up there afterwards when we go back at the end. So there, we just kind of, they're just kind of brownie and goldy now. They're not really pretty yet. They don't have that bright yellow, but it was very basic. It was just solid colors, like a, like a goldy burnt sienna for them. And then I just, in my mind, was thinking about petals and how would they go? And then just painting them in and leaving some little spaces between. But we want to get them yellow, so let's um, let's try that. Hi, Zena. Yeah, the replay should be good. Actually, this did freeze up a minute ago for me too, but just for for a little bit. So I don't know if that's when yours froze up, if it was on my end or not. But it, the video will be perfect when you go to watch it later on. And after the class, anyone still has questions, you can always send me a message, a direct message, or a photo of the painting. If you have in trouble with something, you want me to help you with it, um, just send it to me as a private message on the Tinker's Cart art page, and I'll be sure to see it. Okay. I do want that to dry. It's almost dry. And before I go ahead and put some of the yellow, because I want the yellow to really show up. And I'm going to do a very light yellow. I'm going to actually mix some yellow. Try to stay away from the green. I didn't get the green in there. I'll get a little more to it. And we're just going to mix it with some white. So we're ready for that when it's dry. So I'm going to have to actually mix a little with that. I'll have that waiting. It's almost dry. In the meantime, I can show you, we're going to do the polka dots in white. You could do them any color. You could also do the maroon or you could do hearts. You could do stripes. You could do anything. I like the polka dots. You can either paint polka dots on, and if that's what you're going to do with a little round brush, you, of course, would probably want to thin that paint down a little bit and make it, like I said, a little more like ink, so you could paint those. They do not have to be perfect or perfectly spaced, but if you wanted to, you could just paint the polka dots on. But a little trick, if you have a, a wider brush that has a wider back end. I am always dotting, you can see I'm always dotting things. So um, this might be the widest one. Let's see. Nope, that's bigger. You could take the back end of a brush and pop it right into your paint. And you get pretty cool dots that way. You really need to reload it after every one or two. Otherwise they get a little wonky looking. But they make fun dots. And, and this is the same as if I'm doing something tiny and you just take the back end of one of your little brushes and, you know, you can make any size little dot. They even make these little tools, which I think I have some here maybe. Yeah, they even make a set of these little tools that um, have a little bit of a ball, a metal ball on the end. These are teeny. And they make them up into big, big, big sizes. They think people use them for those mandala, like the, the dot painting on the rocks and things. They have whole sets of these. But I usually have one little one around if I need to make, these will make teeny tiny dots. 
Not to say you can't vary the size. You can make some of his dots big and some small. If I use just this, it's going to all be pretty consistent. But there's no reason why you couldn't use different sizes. So there's a little tip for making dots. Pretty thick paint. So I'm going to have to be careful when I paint my tulips and I don't put my hand in the dots, which could very well happen. So pretty cool. Oh, your yeah, Wi-Fi, Zena. Yeah, I've um, I've problems in certain spots with mine as well. All right, I'm going to finish my dots with the back end of this brush. So I do like to share all the little tips and tricks sometimes of things that we do. You'll find um, on my page little tutorials sometimes. I'll just pop on sometimes and do a time lapse painting of something. Like I said, we try to study little bits of painting so you guys can feel free to branch out on your own and start painting your own photographs and things. I have paintings. Uh, I do a free painting maybe every month, and then we do some paid classes. And I also have a membership, and that is pretty cool. It's brand new, and um, Zena's a member. And for right now, because it's new, it's a, a, a low monthly price. And what is included in that is we have paintings that we do within the private group live. Um, we do Zoom critiques and Q&As. We do little tutorials every month. I'll do one of those little building blocks like waves or clouds. And we have waves coming up tomorrow night, actually. Um, little tips and tricks. It's a nice little community, too. And any of my paid classes that are on the regular page are all included in that membership. So if it seems like something you might be interested in, um, there might be in information on the page or direct message me and I can can uh, tell you about that. It's like I said, it's brand new. It's um, at a founding member price because my members are helping me grow and, and build the group. And um, it's, really, it's a really nice community. We have people from all over and it's a really nice, fun little group. And we are having fun painting. So send me a message if that's anything that might be of interest at all. And let's get some yellow on these guys. Let me get my other palette where I have the yellow paint. So now I just want to brighten them up in places and then we're going to get a little lighter on the edges. But let's just get some yellow in there. I am doing sort of the same strokes as we kind of did uh, to lay in that, that lighter shade of gold. I am just sort of laying that yellow in on top of those shapes I made. Sometimes it could be really bright and heavy. Other times it could be lighter and have some gold show through. That gives it a little dimension. I have pretty much the yellow, but a little bit of, of white sometimes, but we are gonna even add more white and go a little lighter and build it up. And I'm not even worried about covering. You can see, I can see through it a little bit, which is fine. We can come back and brighten up areas if we think we need to. Don't worry about if you hit some of these lines. Don't be too careful and have to worry about these little lines exactly because we are going to shade a little bit still. These are all like little building, you know, we're just base coating and then building up our lights and then we'll go back and add some darks. And I'm going to go in just with a straight yellow here and there because we have something underneath, even though this is translucent, it's going to, it'll, it has a base so it will show up. So here and there, I'll get a nice yellow some spots. Can you see I'm doing it pretty random. I'm not worrying too much and not fussing. I'm just going on those tulips and sort of making little tulip leaf petal shapes. I'm going to start getting lighter now. So I'll grab some white. I'm not wiping or washing the brush out. I'm using the yellow that's in the paint there and I'm going into the white. So it's going to be lighter, but it won't be stark white, which is good. And I am going to see I'm getting it a little lighter on the edge there. Brush here and there. I'm still going to get much brighter after, but I'm using just this light yellow and following those petal shapes again. I don't want to cover the yellow up completely sometimes. So I'm going to go super light on some, but I'm still doing a little bit. Just like the brush strokes. I like the lots of brush strokes. You can see the brush strokes. Gives it a little bit of motion in the paint. 
It went kind of heavy here, so it's a little white, so I'm going to make sure I leave some yellow there. But remember, you can come back and forth and do whatever you need to to get back to some yellow. or It's a back and forth thing. <clears throat> I put them on. I look at it. I see what I might need. I think I'm going to go back with a little white. I mean, excuse me, um, some yellow because I've got a good bit of white on there. And I think the yellows would be nice if I get some brighter yellow here and there. Can you see how I'm not hitting? I'm going to do this petal, say. I'm not doing the whole petal in that shape. I'm just dabbing it on here and there. It's not perfect. It's just getting some yellow in there. And now I want to go back and just add the super white highlights. And then when that's dry, we'll add in some of the burnt sienna. But can you see just the edges here are the bright white? So I'm going to just put a little white in the corner of my brush. So I have just a little bit on the corner. I'm not doing the whole brush. A little bit on the corner. I, I, brought, I brush it off. And I'm just going to almost outline some of those petals sometimes. As bright as you might like. And remember to stand back from your painting because we're so close. We're working on top of it like this and we're criticizing it and we're worried about every little bit. And remember, when someone looks at it, they're not looking at it from far away. So do step back sometimes and look at your paintings. And just where you want them. And I'm using that little bit on the corner because that just gives me a little bit of a line. You could certainly, if you felt more comfortable, take your little liner brush, right? And get those lights where you want them. You know, there's no reason you can't do something like that. And if it looks like too much of a line, just dry off your brush like we were doing before and just gonna soften it. Lots of techniques to get the same result. So don't be afraid to try new things. And I like the way this looks. What do you guys think? It looks a little glary, and these brights on the camera are really showing up more than they are in person. But we can tone them down, and then we're going to add some of the burnt sienna wash on there too, which is going to make a difference. So I am going to tone down some of those. It looks fine in person, but on the camera it's looking a little bit bright. Just play around with them. Get them the way you want. They're fun with the different shaped petals, aren't they? And if you wanted to, you could even come up and, you know, put some another petal in there if you thought it needed it. Sometimes I like to take and put, because they're also tight, tightly wound, and they are tulips, but you can always come and get like a little bit of an edge, like one is sort of opening. You want to do that? How are your tulips all coming out? What do you think? Oh, the purple. That's right. That's right, Zena. Oh. Irises. We should do some irises. I love um, irises. My garden is popping with, I'm not, I don't have a green thumb at all, but my, my garden is popping with irises and I've got some great photos. I'll post them in the group. They are amazing. Um, I love the way the iPhones take amazing photos now. You put it on um, the uh, portrait mode and gosh, it's amazing. What you see, I'll post them. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do those little shadows and we're pretty much done here. I mean, it's Looking done to me. So I'm going to use my round brush and I'm going to really water down that burnt sienna paint. Look at how thick it is now sitting here on me. We're going to really water that down. And make sure my brush is fairly clean. And I'm going to put it on this palette so I have a little room. See how watery it is? It's really like watercolor. And again, I'd rather have it light and than too dark. And because we're working in these light colors is why I go back. And just a little bit of a, if you want it here and there, if you if it needs it. Can you see how that's just, it, it would be darker up in the top here. Where those tulips are, like some of these I made a little opening there. If you need to put a little line back in, you can. I am not going and doing like solid, solid lines, outlining. When I'm doing this sort of thing, I'm sort of stop, start, thicker, thinner, just with the, the brush and the pressure. So you can have really thin lines and just a little pressure. You can go a little thicker, but can you, thinner and thicker, but can you see rather than just outlining with like that, this is more natural looking. 
just kind of press, pull, press, pull. So that's the sort of stroke I'm using rather than just a perfect outline. I don't want it. There's nothing perfect about these things in nature. So if you want, it could be a little darker on the bottom. But because it's so watery, it's great. This could be darker here if you wanted it. But I like really lights and darks in my paintings. And uh, that's why I'm going back now with a little bit of a deeper. Oh, we were going to shade this guy. Um, actually, you know what we're going to do? Um, we're going to make this tulip on top of that one because if this was on top and we shaded here, this would need a stem. And I don't think I'd like a stem cutting that tulip off. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this the little center of this tulip. That one's going to be behind now. And we can always just put a little petal in there behind here. And that one is going to be in front. You know what we can do to make it even look like more in front. If it was in front, there would be a little shadow on this tulip behind. So if something's behind, there would be a little bit more shadow. And there, now that's moved behind. If you think you need to, we lost some of our stems. They look a little bit they blended in with the background. We can get that very light green again. I want you to really get like the stem so you could see it. You could give that a little highlight. It's almost like very light green, mostly white. And make sure these guys have stems. You could always put some in. See what I said about I get carried away? You could put some little light little guys in there. I think those look pretty good. What do you guys think? I like it. Don't forget to sign your paintings too. If this needed to be deepened up at all, you could look at it now and same exact technique, just a little bit the dark, watered down. Oh, I was using maroon. We don't want maroon. We want like a navy blue, dark blue. Mine just looks like it's faded a bit. I want to really set those boots down. Okay. Just a little bit what we already did. I'm just going a little darker. That works. Oh, here, there. Um, I will, if you uh, follow me on Tinker's Cart Art, and what I'll do is I'll put a post up about that for the group. It's called Tinker's Cartists. And um, I will share the link to sign up. So, if you, and there's no um, $19 a month. There is no, um, you know, no commitment. You could cancel anytime you want to. And it's at that low price right now because I just am using you guys to help me along. And uh, there's lots of content in there. There's, I'm building it up, but there's libraries in there of all inspirational photos, uh, paintings that I've, I've already done. Um, and in the description of the paintings are the tracers. And if there's a video link, there's a video there. But there's lots of pictures of paintings that are done and the tracers that you could go ahead on your own and paint too. And we do tend to check in and do something every week. We don't want to, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much, but it's all lives right in the group there and you can access it anytime. So I will, um, when I finish up the class, I will put the link right in the top uh, post of um, Tinker's Cart Arts um, site. So I see you follow me on YouTube, but maybe follow me on the Tinker's Cart Arts site too and you'll see that. So anybody have any other questions? I will, you can kind of see that one. This painting here, I did it a little larger tracer, so it's more off the edge of the painting, which is kind of a cool look. Sometimes you can trace something really big if you want. This one is more centered, you know, not centered, but in, in enclosed in the canvas. And I guess I've told you guys everything. I mentioned the group. Um, follow me on YouTube and on uh Facebook and you'll see all the things that are going on. We have some new classes scheduled for next month. And if you're on my email list, at the top of the Facebook page is a button that says follow um, or sign, uh, sign up or follow. And that will put you on my email list too. So you can uh, get notified that way. I really appreciate you guys popping in with me tonight and painting the spring um, showers painting. I hope you all had fun. And remember, you can watch this anytime later on. Any questions, send me a um, private message and I will answer any and all inquiries and questions. And if you need help, send me a picture and I'll help you up out with it. So I'm going to end now and say good night. And I was very excited to paint with you all. Thank you so much. And I will see you all soon. Bye now.